hello guys welcome to Ferdinand tutorials in this video i'll be teaching you how to write your chapter three of your final year project research work this chapter three is also called your research methodology now writing this on your own simply means you need to know how to write it some persons do pay individuals to write it for them i don't want that for you that is why i'm teaching you so that you can be able to craft your own chapter three yourself without any mistake seamlessly so in this video i want you to watch it till the end and you will understand everything i'll be explaining in this video now in this particular video where i'll be teaching chapter three of your final year project research work there are different topics that you guys have sent in the comment section just as i instructed in my previous video but i decided to choose a particular topic from a subscriber chioma glory now her topic is antibiotic sensitivity pattern of ciprofloxacin against salmonella pulorum and salmonella galenarum isolated from exotic chicken now this is like a microbiology student this is this looks like a microbiological topic so but i will use it to explain how to write your research methodology so let's get right into it now when writing your research methodology the first thing you need to understand is what we call your research design now you must be able to design your experiment each experiment has what we call experimental design so your research design is where you show your experimental design so for this particular topic that's Choma's topic we are going to say that this study adopted an experimental research design to determine the antibiotic sensitivity pattern of ciprofloxacin against salmonella pulorum and salmonella galenarum isolated from exotic chicken are we together now now the next thing you also need to understand in your research methodology is what we call population of the study now when we're talking about population of the study population of the study we are generally focused on the totality of all the respondents to whom the findings of the study will be generalized now you must be able to provide the population of the study that make up that your study it is essential that you provide the population of your study don't just you know get a random number provide the population the total number of that your study now for this particular topic that i'm using when we're talking about describing you know the population of the study for these exotic chickens look at what we are going to do the population of the study comprised exotic chickens sourced from poultry farms within now there are specific location in Enugu state because i'm assuming a location let's take for instance a location in Enugu state is called you know uh aka west so we can say within aka west Enugu state nigeria do you understand so we must provide a population of the study we are using now here in this particular topic too you can decide to attach a specific number say the population you are using is actually this particular number are we together now that is what we're looking at what in population of the study now the next thing you need to understand is what we call sample and sampling technique now what should be in your sample and sampling technique first of all when we're talking about sample sample refers to a section of the population that was used for the study but i say the population is the total number a sample is the section of that total number that was used for the study now the sampling technique discusses the techniques you've adopted in choosing the sample from the population so in this sampling technique now we're looking at the particular technique that you decided to adopt for you to get that your sample from the population now you must indicate your sample size now also the technique used in selecting the sample should be stated and you should give justification for adoption of such technique as it relates to your study when we're talking about justification justification simply means reason why do you decide to go for this technique why do you decide to use this particular sampling technique to get this sample now for Choma's topic let's go back again we're going to say a total of 50 samples remember 50 is not a total population but 50 is the word is the sample that means from each from a population that's where we get our sample so a total of 50 samples were collected from local swabs of exotic chicken using now this is the sampling technique what is the sampling technique simple random sampling to ensure representation i don't know if you are getting what we are talking about here now the next thing that should be in your methodology is what we call instrument for data collection 
Now, when I'm talking about instrument for data collection, what we are focused on is we're looking at, you know, you being able to describe in detail all the instruments used in collecting the data for the project. Now, this may include your questionnaire. Of course, you know what is questionnaire. It can include interview schedules, sociometric instruments, rating scales, tests. That's the one you can give to students to, uh, you know, to submit government document and all that. Now, the instrument also should be able to explain, including how it is patterned, sectioned and scaled in terms of what expected responses and weightings. Now, let's go back again to Choma's topic. Now, to Choma's topic, I've already told you that this is, you know, a microbiological topic. So, the instrument here can include, you know, the media, the reagent, and test procedures. Are we together now? Now, example here, we can look at data were collected using standard microbiological techniques isolation of salmonella species was carried out using selective media such as xyloslicin deoxycholate agar antibiotic susceptibility testing was performed using the kebebura this diffusion method with you know all those things that's all about that now, the next thing you need to know about this research methodology is validity of the instrument. Now, validity of the instrument, the process involved in the validity of the instrument should be explained in details. This is mostly based on the face and content validity, construct validity, concurrent validity, and all that, depending on the nature of your study. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Now, for this particular topic, back to back to Choma's topic now, we're going to say, the microbiological method and antibiotic susceptibility test used in this study are standardized technique. Are you getting what I'm saying? We are validating the technique used now. A standardized technique recommended by the Clinical and Laboratory Standard Institute, ensuring validity of the results. Are you getting what we are discussing here? <laughs> okay. Now, the next one is reliability of the instrument. Of course, when we are talking about reliability of the instrument, we are generally focused on you know the method of reliability how it was done how the results were obtained of course you should also understand that there should be an explanation of the type of reliability that was undertaken and its justification its reason that's what justification means now this could be you know conducting another test like test retest you know split half or some other methods depending on the nature of your study now for Chioma's topic when we're talking about reliability of the instrument, reliability was ensured by repeating all antibiotic susceptibility tests in duplicate and consistent results were obtained across trials. Right? Now, if you've not watched that my video on you know MSC, you know, thesis diaries that I recorded last week, you were missing something. Maybe after this video, you can go check it out. You understand what I mean by you know constructing a reliability. You know test whereby you have to you know carry out several tests to make sure that you know your instrument that you're using conducting an experiment is actually reliable are we together i will link that video in the description so maybe you can go watch it okay the next thing here is procedure for data collection and we're talking about procedure for data collection here we're trying to explain you know a section that shows the step by step of how instruments were administered now you must give the details of how data collection was carried out are we together give in details now here example according to Thomas topic also now the cloaker swab samples were aseptically collected from exotic chickens and transported to the laboratory in sterile containers samples were cultured on algae and incubated at 37 degrees for 24 hours Suspected colonies were subjected to biochemical tests for confirmation of salmonella species. Confirmed isolates were tested for ciprofloxacin sensitivity using the disk diffusion method and zones of inhibition were measured in millimeters. Now, this is the procedure for data collection for this specific topic, just in a nutshell. Now, the last thing here that you must know when preparing or writing your methodology is or method of data analysis. Now, when we're talking about method of data analysis, you must be able to state the statistical tools used in the analysis of your study, such as percentages, frequency counts, the mean, the standard deviation, the chi-square test, the t-test, analysis of variance, that's the one we call ANOVA, 
with the, your bar chart, pie chart, histogram, graphs, and all that. You must also justify the selection of such method. You don't just go and assume, depending on the nature of your study. Now, back to Choma's topic. For Choma's topic, the diameter zones of inhibition were measured and interpreted according to, you know, the CLSI standard. Data were analyzed using descriptive statistics such as mean and standard deviation. Do you understand? And the results were presented in tables and charts. So, you know, if you follow through, you know, these particular steps I've given, first of all, for you to write your research methodology, you must be able to know your research design, population of the study, sample and sampling technique, the instrument for data collection, your validity of the instrument, reliability of the instrument, procedure for data collection, and the last but not the least is method of data analysis. So I believe this video has been able to help you know you understand what I mean by methodology in a project writing. So I want to you know see you again in my next video. I would like you to drop a comment if you have any question or if you understand the concept or anything you know so that i can be able to know the subscribers the people that you know are listening to what i'm saying here i just want to you know see you have conversation in the comment section and i wish you the best in your project writing i believe that you'll come back here and then testify that okay this video helped you to get an a in your project writing thank you again for watching in my next video i will explain chapter four of your project report writing